One of the problems you may encounter is that a small camper trailer might not have enough space for you or your family. Well, wait until you see how much space Lynn creates within such a small footprint. You're going to see how her creativity and ingenuity transforms a basic, affordable small camper into her perfect little home on wheels. Hi, my name is Lynn Berry, and I had just the most utmost pleasure of meeting Drew from Playing With Sticks. And I'm very happy because I get to showcase Camp In's Road Toad, which is their newer model. They've been around 20 some years, and I'm a retired single woman in my 60s, and I want to really start traveling big time, almost to the point where I would like to live full time in this camper is my dream. So I needed something lightweight um, because I have a Kia Soul. I love that car. I like the gas mileage. And I wanted then something that I could tow within its capacity. And also a big part of it was that I could park and also just wheel it around on the third wheel in the front big time. That was helpful for me. Uh, the other part that intrigued me so much about this was first the cost. It was very low cost and that was important for sure for my needs. And then also that it was composite. When I learned that this was all aluminum and composite, I quickly realized, wow, so no rotting, no rust, no breakdown. So for me, um, not wanting to do worry about all that maintenance for something, that was the ticket that, that filled it. It weighed only 400 pounds dry weight. This model, because this is the open tote model, they have two. One is the abode, this one's the tote. I said, yep, that's the one for me. When I backed in the other day, my wonderful camping neighbor said, hey, I can help you uh, just roll that in. And I said, thanks, but I'll show you how easy this is. I love to design and do things. I, I was a bed and breakfast owner and actually loved always decorating my rooms and you know the kitchen and all the functionality of it. So that filled my passion too, to have a blank canvas that I could make it my own. I can have a lightweight trailer and load it up actually with many pounds of gear, uh, equipment, even I want to travel with my sewing machine. I would like to bring my bicycle maybe even the massage chair, because I do that, and I um, play keyboard. It just allowed then a lot more room for the extra gear, because that'll add up quickly. <laughs> Everything you see on the sidewalk in this photo fits into Lynn's trailer all at one time. This particular one came with options that I could order the shelf as an add-on, because I didn't get the built-in abode model. And I'm so glad I did this personally. It is removable, it just clips in both sides. So if I still wanted to take everything out of here, it even comes with six tie-down spots in the floor for cargo, for strapping down cargo. And I like that. I love a lot of versatility and multi-uses for things that I have. Can you explain mm -hmm. that abode versus this? Like what would, the, what would that be? What's in there? Yeah, the abode has a built-in wall that would be right about in here because it uses that same shelf size, I'm pretty sure. So it would come down to here and then cut in, of course, for foot room down below and give you about 12 inches of space below the shelf but it would all be built in like that, like a tip, more typical teardrop design. And then on the inside, they would have some modular shelves, cabinets, so to speak. I decided to just go with that more open feel and not closed in, that I could also camp in areas and be, if I felt safe enough to leave this open, stay right in my bed or sit up in my bed and work and look right out the window at the view and the openness. Uh, that meant a lot to me and I am enjoying that this summer as I've been camping. And it also was plenty of room for me to put up my own module storage shelves in there. So it's all just working so beautifully. Um, just very passionate about my little baby. <laughs> no, I completely understand. <laughs> I'm so grateful too that Craig and Carrie of Camp Inn were the ones that were making this. And even though, yes, it's a very inexpensive entry level trailer, they have had the integrity and standards set 
for years with their other camp-in models. Right, right here, right? Oh, yes, indeed. And then that one over there, the raindrop. Um, this one is their teardrop and uh, 560, 550 model. So that, that speaks volumes for me. Again, adding to that confidence that I'm a single woman, I'm not a mechanic, and I don't want to worry about those things. I just want to have fun <laughs> and living in it. I decided to add the uh, options of a full deluxe mo uh, package, electrical package. So it does have the outlet coming in. You don't have to slam it in the door, the cord, and a nice heavy duty battery in there. You know, it was just kind of fun the way to modulating this out for my needs right now. This tote is just turned on its side with actually a shoe box rack or a shoe rack put in there all lightweight, which is good. <laughs> uh, and it's also tilted back automatically, so things stay put where they're meant to. My water container here, it's very handy. And it just fits, everything just fits within the door coming closed. Um, and then when I kind of walk around, I wanted to be able to create a living space uh, within this 10 by 10 footprint. It's actually very easy for me to set up this 10 by 10. And when I use the stakes in the posts and the guy lines, I'm pretty confident with even mild to fair winds that it's stable. I have used it that way. This was a thrift store buy, which I love to thrift store and repurpose things. It's a towel warmer. I originally wanted it to be the framework for a shelf table that would come all the way out and use these for the support that I needed to keep it stable across the fender. But since then I thought, well, I don't know. I kind of like this setup instead because I have a table, a desk here, a very versatile desk that changes positions and slants and, and that which I can also use then in the nighttime or on a rainy day inside the trailer, which I'll show you, but show you how I can sit straight up on my cot and it works great as a single person. Take advantage of that. <laughs> and um, and I do, it, it, this under here is my keyboard stand, music, key, you know, piano keyboard stand that I threw in just this week for this outing and thought, oh, I'm gonna try this out to hold this piece of wood next to the fender so that then my cooler is secure here. It's very stable. And I can use this too for my hot plate cooking outside of the galley area, which I do prefer. You know, I don't, when I want to travel in bear country, I would prefer not to create any splatters and smells of food in the galley, especially because it's all open. <laughs> uh, I did add some vinyl pieces, you know, you can got them at Home Depot or Menards, just these simple things to protect the top surface because that surface was like this. And I also had them raise the position of it four inches. Typically, it's going to be 15 inches from this floor, 15 inches high. But because I decided to go with the cot, that raised my f feet. And I said, hey, could you uh, put that at like 19 inches? Just even four more inches will make it or break it for my ability for the feet to lay on my back and stretch fully out to the 78 inch cot with my toes up and have that room. And he said, no problem, certainly. Again, very customizable. The Craig and Carrie are just the most beautiful people to work with. If you look below the countertop, Lynn has added pegboard and some board where she made little cutouts and she's putting bug netting behind it. This way bugs can't get in, but the air can go through. I like to prefer to either use butane. Um, I don't need for me, I realize I don't need the heavier two burner Coleman, but I do have it. If I was visiting family and we were gonna be having some bigger cookouts, I would bring that, just trade them out. But I also, when I have electric, realize, oh, this is very lightweight. I've had this in my storage. I love using that, because I'm not having to use butane then either, or propane. This trip, I even brought my Instant Pot. <laughs> For now, when I travel, I do have to take this apart, but I lay these down flat. That one inside comes out here too, next to that. This comes in the middle and it creates a nice tight, secure fit across. And I just repack things in it upright this way so they're all secure, they're not going anywhere. And it secures it all within this lip. Because it has the lip on it, it's a very nice feature for not having things be falling off. And 
when I'm traveling. You and I talked about if we if you ever did get into a system after three years and you know exactly what you want, you could bolt this down. Yes. You could secure everything in place. But the beauty of it now is it can move weekly and change with your needs. And as you evolve as a camper, this back end evolves with you. Yes. Unlike being forced into a design that somebody else created. Yes, yeah. You have to do it and live in it to see, hmm, that works, but I'm gonna change this, you know, and you get to do that. Then I like also to have some privacy. I'm still modest and um, I've experimented with a couple different tents but I did the same thing to both of them. I ordered whatever I could get that was off the frame, not a you know pop-up modular with a frame in it, because I wanted to sew a sleeve onto the hole that I would put into the side that would accommodate then a casing and a paracord tied tight at the bottom, securely tight around the door. I live in mosquito country and we don't want, you know, the bugs and everything getting in there, flies. Certainly weather, it rained last night good and nothing came in. Um, and it's large enough to sit in. If Honestly, if I was in an area where I knew the weather was going to be real bad, especially windy, I would not set up the 10 by 10. But if I could just pop this up, which is a 4 by 4, it came with the walls, I'd be good. You know, that's protective enough. Uh, and even cook from the inside because I can access my galley from the inside too, which is another feature of the open tote style. So then here I do have my, my potty system right now that works for me. Um, dry shoes, something to, you know, a table to set some things on, lantern. Then again, I can open the door and it's all very secure around there. I left enough room just so that if I had to have it a little away from the trailer or turn this way or that because of the ground level, it would accommodate that some. And I, because this open model does not have the, the cabinetry, the storage, you know, built-in shelves up there, I knew, well, that's great for me because I didn't want that closed-in feeling myself. But it also gave me the ability to just put two simple you know, modular plastic units right here, which I really like. They're easy to access, they're secure inside the drawers. Um, then, because I just mentioned how many mosquitoes are in the area that I live in Wisconsin, I thought, okay, I need to, since I want this open, I'm just gonna create a little netting, which just mosquito, just tool netting from the fabric store. And I created a casing on it and put it right on a suspension rod. Lightweight, nothing biggie about it, but it did the trick. I've had it in so many situations already with the lights on that attract a bunch of bugs right to this area. They do not get through here. So then I can sit up on the bed. I chose with, to go with a, a cot that was just eight inches off the ground. And that just happened to be an Ozark Trails model because I didn't want it so high that I couldn't sit on the edge of the bed. I wanted to find something for that. So I do have a wedge pillow that I carry in the car that I bring in if I really want to sit like this for a while. So I can actually sit back against the wedge pillow, support my lumbar spine, have my legs you know, pretty good position. And if I want, I bring that little desk in from outside that's adjustable all the way down to here with a slant if I want. And I've worked with my laptop, I've read things, written things very comfortably and still, as you can see, I could sit straight up and not hit my head. There's still, I've got a cap on, but there's still an inch there where I'm not rubbing my head at all and yet sitting straight up. And with your eight inches of cot, is there a little storage under there then? Yeah, so that was it too. I thought, okay, I need more storage places. So that definitely adds a nice area between each support leg for plenty of storage. Well, I'm gonna plug some of the things you're doing here. So this is something I talk about. I think one of the greatest things you can do with a teardrop is after you purchase it, buy a mattress that's smaller than the floor space of that teardrop. Because what you've done here is you now have what I call the mud room. You have a place to take off shoes and store them. 
you have an area to make an end table. If So a lot of people, even if you just went a little smaller, just a foot smaller than the room, you now can set your water down, your iPhone to charge, have a little place to move. But if your entire teardrop, like most of ours, is a bed, you know, if you have a dog coming in or if you're just coming in on a muddy, wet hike day, it's really hard to keep that area clean. Yeah. And now you have essentially a home you've made by doing this, right? Yeah, for me personally, if I uh, saw these mattresses that go right to the door, I just kept thinking, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. I, I would like that space. And that's what we see with the hiker owners and the runaway owners, now the road toad owners. They're looking for a trailer that can be modified to meet their needs. So many of us with our teardrop trailers, because it has its own drawers and cabinets, we have to buy items that specifically fit into that trailer. But what I'm seeing you doing, you're buying an item that you like, and then you're making the trailer fit around it, right? Exactly, yeah. Interestingly, when I asked Craig, co-owner of um, Camp Inn, I said, so before I try to figure out how to design a curtain that would cover these windows on this sort of an upside down slant, um, he said, well, first of all, you can do quite a bit because this carpet that they do use in every road toad, you get your choice of gray or tan, certainly helps with the condensation big time. It's the ticket. But it also is like one giant Velcro, <laughs> the, um, you know, fuzzy end, whatever you would call it. So I thought, oh, okay, great. And so I just created this indoor-outdoor fabric, um, kind of stylish, you know, design, knowing, oh, I'll just put Velcro tabs along this end in a, and then a casing in it to hold a very lightweight cafe rod so it's stiff. Um, and at nighttime then, I just pull it down. So it just pulls right off the Velcro. I go like this and stick it on down here. And you can do that. You can add pouches up there to hold oh, your headlamp. Gosh. And I mean, yeah. you can accessorize this out with all that space. Yep. You yeah. talked about the condensation. So mm -hmm. that leads me to the non-insulating quality of this trailer. Is there an insulated version? Do you know? Not of this one. Of the road toad? No. Okay. This is it. Yep. And so we're looking at kind of three season camping. Are you going to try to go four? I am, but I would go south. <laughs> I'm not like you being in Alaska, like, no, <laughs> I'm not that tough yet. Um, but I would go south and tool around the southern states. I'd love to see them anyway, yes. you know, and hang down there during the winter time and create a, um, I still have to work, so, but I'm, I'm still confident that I will cobble it together. <laughs> I will figure out a way. So yes, um, the night before last, it was I think it was 39 degrees and that was the coldest night I've been in it but I think before that it got down to 52 so that's quite different but I was cold that first night and I had a little ceramic heater there but it doesn't it's not on a thermostat it's either on or off and I did use that to take the chill off but then I realized Ooh, it didn't take long a few hours where ah oh, <laughs> I think it's as cold in here as it is outside and I didn't have enough blankets to add, so I was a little bit chilly that night. Um, that's when, in, in my case, again, the cute story about the towel warmer came in and Jen next door suggested, why don't you just bring in your towel warmer tonight, which was last night, and see how that works. And sure enough, I did, plugged it in back there right through the opening. Again, nice to access the power package right through. <laughs> and uh, plugged it in, just set it right up here, and it just added just enough radiant heat to make it perfect. Not too warm, not too cold. However, this morning then, because of the temperature difference, uh, I do know that the carpet is beautiful because it's picking up a lot of moisture, but there was, right, you know, certainly on this side where I sleep, this metal part of the door was damp. It was you know, wet. You could see that that was wet. Of course, I'm laying right here, so I'm breathing right into this area. The walls, though, I touched the walls and they were fine. So, oh, well, that's not bad. So that's pretty normal. Even an insulated teardrop trailer, you're going to get condensation there. That's the spot. So yeah. it seems like it, I mean, you're getting some pretty cold temperatures and it's doing pretty well. Check out this video on the left for a detailed tour of the Road Toad abode. 
This will give you a much more in-depth look at how this trailer was built and designed. And if you're interested in other trailers that can be customized like this Road Toad, check out this video on the right, which features the affordable hiker trailer. As usual, stay safe on the road and we will see you in the next episode.